Okay, so you want to do one more graph conversion? Okay, you see this. Suppose this is VT graph we have converted into TV. And then PT. Try this A to B, B to C, and C to A. Done. Okay. Okay, I'll see this. Okay. <clears throat> Assume this line is passing through origin, right? This is the assumption we have. Okay, understood. So, B to C and A to B. A to B, the process is what? Quickly, I'll write down this. A to B, the process is isothermal if you have any doubt you can tell me b to c we have constant pressure process isobaric and c to a we have constant volume iso coric process we have okay first of all we'll see isothermal so isothermal i am taking like this 
graph we have. So A B will go like this. Which one is A? Which one is B? We'll see. A B will be like this. A B is this A C. C A is constant volume, right? So we'll have C over here. We'll go like this. C A B. Is this correct? C A will have constant volume. A B will have volume decreases. Acha, A B volume decreases, no? See, AB will have volume decreases. Here the volume is increasing. A to B. Uh, one second. C to A will have constant volume. Constant pressure we have B to C. B to C. If it is up, then A should be down. Acha. If you take this as uh, C, this is A, this is B. A to B will go like this. Then we'll have B to C like this. Constant pressure C to A like this. This is the graph here. It's correct. C to A you see constant volume. A to B will have constant temperature. B to C will have constant pressure. This is the graph we have. Okay. P to T. P and T. AB is isothermal, so we must have one line like this. Okay. A to B, we have volume decreases, means pressure should increase, right? So I think I would uh, take AB like this. Okay. Then uh, volume is constant, so volume is constant, we'll have for C to A. C to A, the volume is constant, correct? So C to A. The volume is constant. So if I uh, just rough, roughly, I'm drawing one, one second. C to A, if it goes like this, then C to B will have constant pressure. Ha, hai. So the graph will go like this. I'll shift this graph on the left side. So we'll have uh, this line. This is the graph we have. So we'll have A to B. A to B volume decreases, constant temperature. Constant temperature, volume decreases, pressure should increase, correct? So we'll have uh, this one. A to B and this is C. A, B, B, C, C. Look at this graph. Is this correct? Tell me. All the process, everything you can understand here, it is coming out to be right. Yeah. So this is the graph we have, right?
Fine. So this is the answer we'll have, right? You check your uh, other things, Shresh. Okay, this should be the graph we have. Okay. So you have to, you know, you have to again, you know, think like, you know, one process you just take, place it here in the axis, and then you see whether you have the other points, whether we should have the other points on the left, on the right. Have a guess, guess on it. You will have the the final graph you will get after some time. You will have better understanding of it. Once you do some more practice, you will understand this. Anyways, so next we are going to start very two important uh, process here that is reversible and irreversible process. Okay, heading right down all of you. First, we are going to discuss reversible process. Okay. What is reversible process? You first try to understand. Okay. I'll just give you the important points here, but first let's understand this. To understand this, we are taking a piston cylinder system. Okay. Copy down the graph, this uh, figure with me, all of you. So I'm taking a piston cylinder system here. This is the piston and the cylinder we have here. Same piston cylinder system we have here. Same thing, there's two different states we have, that is it. Okay, so what happens here, you see, we have some gaseous molecules present here in this cylinder. And here the piston is static, right? This is static. Here we have gaseous molecules present. It's the same system at two different states, that is it. So what happens here initially, we have the external pressure, P external, and we have the internal pressure that is the pressure of gas. Okay. Now what we do, it is here in the equilibrium, right? Now if you place a stone on the top of it, what happens then? Could you tell me? If you place a stone, you will disturb the equilibrium of this pressure and this pressure. Yes or no? The piston will come down a bit. Correct? Yes. Piston will come down. Okay. So you are increasing the external pressure. Try to understand it this way. You are increasing the external pressure from to delta P. Means P plus delta P we have. Slightly the pressure increases. The piston will come down. Even if you, even if you, even you are not, you know, uh, observing it, it was, it is not visible because there is slight increase in pressure. So the piston will come down a bit. You won't even observe it that the piston is coming down or has come down, but it is there. Correct. Again, you do this once external pressure increases, there will be a bit of compression and then again, the equilibrium maintained. Correct. Yes, all of you, tell me, yes, correct. So this is one step, first step, next. So this is a state A we have, for example, the state A we have, for example, and this is a state B, two different state, like I said, we are going to understand. We want to go from A to B. That's what we are discussing. We want to go from A to B, we increase the pressure. What is this? I didn't get you, Anurag. What is dP by dG is equals to zero? What is G there? What is P external? No, no. 
why this expression for I'm not getting you? I said, I said, we increase the external pressure. Compression takes place. Piston will come down and then the equilibrium will be maintained again. The piston is balanced. Any doubt in this? Correct. Okay. We want to go from A to B. Again, we'll put one more stone. Again, it will come down. Equilibrium maintained. Step number two. Step number three. Step number four. And suppose this, you have increased the pressure to a certain extent. And then we have reached this state B. So this compression is done slowly, isn't it? One by one, one after the other, one step, then second step, third step, fourth step, like this it is going. Means slowly you are increasing the pressure, right? So this process, when you are increasing the pressure slowly, we are taking an example of compression, same thing is possible with expansion also. Just you go back, you remove this stone, piston will come up again, come up, come up, come up, and you will state, you will have the state A again. So this process, whether it is compression or expansion, this way we call it as reversible process, correct? So the reversible process is extremely slow process. One by one, it happens. There are infinite number of steps. Here we have talked about four different steps, just to make you understand, but such infinite number of steps possible because we are increasing the pressure by delta value p plus delta b so increase is very small almost negligible you won't even feel that the piston is going down but yes slowly it is going down right so this process is reversible process any doubt in this yes tell me any doubt in this No, tell me external pressure is constant or variable here in this process. External pressure is constant or variable. Pranav, are you there? No, it is not constant, Aditya, you see. You have done this in physics also, reversible, irreversible. Have you done this thing in physics? Tell me. See what happens we are increasing the pressure slowly. No, then only the compression is taking place. So one by one, you are putting in this pressure, the stone you are putting in and pressure you are increasing gradually, right? And hence it is coming down. And hence what we can say, the external pressure is not constant. Very important one it is. The external is not constant. It is continuously changing. Understood? Right. And now I can see Pranav, it was not there. Anyways, so this is not constant, very important information, which we'll use in derivation also, right? We'll see that derivation, how do we do and how do we use this information? But this process, reversible process, you can have many properties of it that you should know. We have taken the example of compression here same thing we can happen other way also that will be the case of expansion suppose you have state b right you remove this stone one by one you will reach out to this point that is state a that will be the case of expansion okay so reversible process can be compression can be expansion anything if external pressure is increasing it is a case of compression external pressure is decreasing it is a case of expansion both ways is possible some properties of this you write down very important properties write down i'm sorry 
write down it is bidirectional it is bidirectional means both way it can move right you remove the stone you will get this right it is bidirectional this process can be reversed process can be reversed along the same path along the same path third one no external work is required work is required to restore the system system to its original position just you need to remove this nothing much you need to do copy it third property write down third property write down there are infinite number of steps and each steps are in equilibrium number of steps each step is in equilibrium it is an imaginary process ideal process like we have ideal gas this process is also imaginary process it is not practically possible extremely slow extremely slow process we have each step is very slow most important property p external is not constant gradually we are increasing the external pressure if you decrease the external pressure that would be the case of expansion and we can apply pv is equals to nrt at each step these are the properties of i so sorry reversible process we have then see we are increasing delta p uh, external pressure by by very small value you know suppose the value is uh, p external is given suppose 10 atmospheric p external now you have increased you have decreased the external pressure to 9.99 atmospheric you have decreased it so that change in pressure is very small so the process that the piston that comes down or you have increased it for example i am taking 10.0001 atmospheric so the piston that comes down that shift is very uh, small right because the pressure that you have increased is very small large increase is not there so it will slowly go goes down the piston will go down slowly and that process the movement of the piston that we have it is extremely small because the difference in pressure is not that high 
pressure difference is what 0.001 so pressure difference is not that high process is extremely slow it will go down attains equilibrium further you increase pressure again go down attains equilibrium like this it happens in a step wise manner correct and each step is in equilibrium plus extremely slow step any doubt in this anyone any doubt no with this graph you will understand it uh, you know in a better way you see this graph first of all i'll show you it is the reversible process graph we have pressure volume diagram for example this so when external pressure increases we'll have compression or no quasi static is a bit different from this quasi static is a type is a kind of you know um a reversible process only very slow but there will have friction also means every time it is not a quasi static process it is the similar one but not exactly same okay okay now you see what happens if external pressure decreases expansion or compression if external pressure decreases expansion or compression tell me expansion correct suppose this is a state a we have we have some external pressure here now we decrease the external pressure so we decrease the external pressure to some value intermediate value but once you decrease it in this course will have some expansion like this you see this is the expansion we have in this expansion further you decrease the pressure will have again expansion here like this expansion further you decrease the pressure will have expansion again like this and like this it goes right you keep on decreasing the pressure will have expansion like this are you getting it right this is suppose we have state b at this point this is state b a to b so the, all these steps we are counting this is an infinite number of steps we have like this we have infinite number of steps i have drawn this just to make you understand but like this we have infinite number of steps possible extremely slow process and the entire process if you see it goes like this from this pressure to this pressure like this it goes correct so pressure you see continuously changing from here to here there are this expansion then again the pressure decreases will have this expansion again pressure decreases will have this expansion pressure decreases will have this expansion clear any doubt in this no right on this process because we'll have the application of it if you don't understand how to derive work done in isothermal reversible process you won't understand it right isothermal you must have done work done in physics no reversible isothermal expansion process work done what is the formula we have w is equals to could you tell me minus 2.303 nrt log v2 by v1 remember that you must have done in physics yes so this work done uh, like i'm just deviating from this topic a bit so that this is just to make you understand you must have calculated the work done the formula is 2.303 nrt log v2 by v1 in physics correct how do we derive it do you remember that how do we derive it how do we derive it w is equals to yes minus p external dv isn't it and then what we do this this we integrated dw we integrated 0 to w 
and v1 don't write this okay v1 to v2 now the question is why don't you take this p external out of the integral sign could you answer this to me why don't you take this out why don't you take this p external out and dv just you integrate why because p external is not constant for reversible process remember that right so this you need to know if the process is reversible p external is not constant and hence we cannot take this out of the integral sign you have to substitute it here nrt by v and then you have to integrate it correct right that's why it is important to understand what is reversible irreversible process if it is irreversible process we'll discuss irreversible now then we can take this p external out because irreversible process p external is constant over there and then the directly the answer would be minus p external delta v this is the work done we have in all irreversible process did you get it now yeah have you done reversible irreversible process in physics okay okay no problem so this is the reason we have why p external we took out of the integral sign i can directly tell you p external is a function of volume here that's why we are not we are not taking him out but then uh, we'll we'll do this math later on let's not focus on this formula i am trying to make you understand the importance of these two process because when it is irreversible we have taken this out but in reversible we don't take this out so reason is this that that the one that i have explained right that is the first thing you need to understand no p external is not constant that's what we are talking about i think we are talking about expansion or compression no that is only possible when you change p external by some value yeah if p x no, we cannot say it is not constant if the equilibrium is not reached ah, i am discussing this irreversible so just a second madam see if p external is not constant then the piston will not be at equilibrium uh, it's not like that uh, obviously see it's it's a hypothetical question aditya we must have some external pressure right so that pressure is constant only if you are not changing it we are changing it out it's not like it's happening on its own we are putting the stone there we are disturbing the equilibrium we are increasing the external pressure it is not happening on its own correct so it's not like p external is not constant then what happens p external is always constant external pressure is always constant we are disturbing it understood aditya yeah so this is one thing so i hope you understood now the you know the reversible process and why p external is not constant in irreversible in reversible process now i'm going back to just make you understand the second process that is irreversible in reversible what happens you see here see what happens here suppose this is 1 1 kg block we have stone i have put in means total you see i have put in 4 kg of block slowly and slowly this piston will go down and down and down and reaches out to state p yes so no i want you to i want you to respond here on a regularly because it is very important then only i will be understanding that you are getting it or not see so 1 1 kg just for reference i am telling you 1 1 kg we have taken and slowly i put it here and then the piston will go down and will reach this state p what happens this is one way we can achieve this state why can't we put a 4 kg block here directly can we do that instead of 1 1 1 1 1 i'll put total 4 kg of a uh, 4 kg of brick over there and piston will go down suddenly right piston will go down suddenly and attains this equilibrium state can we do that Uh, assuming that it won't collapse yeah yeah piston is massless correct piston mass we are not considered 
assume assume that this whole system will not collapse okay it is you know you know strong enough to sustain the weight of that brick okay so instead of putting 1111 kg block i'll put 4 kg of that stone over there the piston will suddenly go down compression takes place and attains this state b can do that so this process is faster than the previous one right the movement of piston you can observe piston will go down suddenly right all of a sudden correct so this process is irreversible process it happens fast right against a constant against a constant external pressure because the moment that you put in this block heavy block of 4 kg external pressure will rise to a certain value and compression takes place because of this new external pressure and that is same throughout the process from this point to this point isn't it so can we say here the piston sorry the external pressure is constant can we say that did you understand tell me did you understand all of you you know isobaric is constant pressure process okay whether it is happening too fast or too slow that's a different thing irreversible is different than isobaric the only thing is common in irreversible and isobaric is constant external pressure okay isobaric can be extremely fast or slow but reversible irreversible is always fast process yeah it is see that's what i'm defining try to understand the difference it's not like 4 kg block is irreversible try to understand the difference in the two process okay state a to state b we are going slowly that is reversible one other way is what all of a sudden you increase the pressure and the piston will go down to state b that is one way also which is faster than the previous one extremely fast in fact so this kind of process is irreversible process yes so whatever the change madhav we have against that change only the compression is taking place it's not like i'm not talking about this pressure once you put the block over here we have some external pressure plus some pressure we are putting in because of this block so against this pressure the compression is taking place so whatever the pressure is it is same throughout the process state a to state b isn't it uh no we won't say the time is zero we just say it is faster than the previous process it happens so fast time thing we don't consider here we don't define this in terms of time okay it takes a lot of time and takes almost zero time not like that so did you understand the basic difference between the two process yes this one quickly guys basic difference you understood correct so this is why you see the external pressure in case of uh, you know a uh, irreversible process is constant but is not constant but in case of reversible process it is it is it varies right it variable constant for irreversible variable for reversible okay so like we have seen some properties of reversible process we have some properties of irreversible process also i'm not going to draw the you know the piston cylinder system over here just you write down few process and then we'll see the graph of this okay so it is first of all unidirectional you cannot reverse it that's why it is irreversible unidirectional write down we cannot reverse the process to the initial position if you want to reverse it you have to do some work on it right so work has to be done work has to be done on system
on system by surroundings by surroundings to restore system to restore system in its original position without work it is not possible in its original position without work it is not possible because it is irreversible okay some because the process is very fast some amount of heat has been lost some amount of energy has been lost you know in the form of heat the process is fast no so because of friction or you know if friction you are not assuming there if it is frictionless also because of fast process some amount of energy is lost in the form of heat that's why if you if you remove the block right the energy that is that has gone already you cannot restore that energy so original position you won't gain if you want to gain you have to provide some energy from outside that is the work done understood yeah so finite so that's what you see fast process right there will be exchange of energy with surroundings slow pro the process is extremely slow right exchange of energy with surroundings is not possible that is also very important point okay next write down it has finite number of steps finite steps means what we can count 8 10 12 like that it's not like infinite steps yeah we cannot count that so it has finite number of steps fast process they asked this in the school exam also difference between irreversible and reversible process it is a fast process okay it is real and actual one the actual process is this only the previous one if you remember we have discussed is imaginary won't happen on practically system is at thermodynamic equilibrium system is at it's not like we don't have equilibrium over here but the only difference is is at thermodynamic equilibrium thermodynamic equilibrium at only initial and final step initial and final step at only initial at final step correct so we have equilibrium only at initial and final step and that's why pv is equals to nrt we can apply only at initial and final step right on the next point we can apply pv is equals to nrt only at initial and final step okay and the most important one is we have p external constant constant external pressure ha one second copy is done i'm just coming i'll take some water and come just a second yeah copy this
Done. Yes. Then no. Okay. Now, if you look at the graph here, graph for this process. Okay, so we have pressure, volume, external pressure is this initially when state A we have external pressure is this. Now when you put the block, 4 kg block, all of a sudden the pressure will come down, right? It is state B. And in this process what happens, the expansion takes place, right? And the graph will go like this. Sorry. One second. Expansion goes like this. Okay, it won't touch the, uh, you know, X axis here. I'll just remove this point. So we'll go like this. Just to make you understand, I have taken this graph. So this is a decrease in pressure and entire pressure, the expansion takes place like this. Okay. So constant pressure, which is this. Against this pressure only, the expansion is taking place. Understood. So these, these are the processes you need to understand and keep in mind. Okay. No, this is just here to make you understand. It's like pressure was here initially. Once you increase the pressure, it will go down and then the pressure volume expansion happens. No. So it goes like this. So it's a continuous graph. It's not like it is you know, coming down and then it, like this. There's no steps over here. It's a continuous graph like this. Because both happens, uh, you know, the pressure increases all of a sudden, decreases all of a sudden, and then the expansion takes place like this. I have taken this, the example of irreversible expansion you will show this graph to other you see it's not like these two points you will show right the relation of pv is like this only exponential relation so you draw the graph like this the expansion is why the graph stops at this point because it is happening against this pressure. 
That's why it stops over here. No, TV is goes to NRT is applicable only at this and this point, initial and final. Understood? Yeah. Path does not matter over here, but it goes like this only. Yeah. So this is the processes you need to understand. Okay. Now next write down, we'll see thermodynamic quantity. After finishing this thermodynamic quantity, we can think of, you know, uh, the first law of thermodynamics we can start and then we can start the derivation also of work and other things, correct? So first of all, You write down the heading thermodynamic quantity first one is is work Work is generally, we have PV work we are discussing. Pressure volume work. Okay. So for this, first of all, we have an IUPAC convention. This you need to memorize. IUPAC convention. And what is this convention? Then on the system is always positive. Just a second. Okay. Work done. On the system is always positive. Whenever work is done on the system, it is a case of compression. Right? Work done by the system. System is doing work, right? By the system is negative. Remember it is ultra in physics. Okay, it is a case of expansion. So there is no any, you know, uh, mistakes over here. This is the convention of we use in chemistry. In physics, it is opposite. Okay, the work done formula that we have, general formula is DW is equals to minus of P external into DV. This is the general formula we have for all processes. The expression of work done, we always get from this particular formula. Okay, all the processes will just apply the condition of a particular process and we'll get the expression of work done from there. Okay, so this is the relation we have. Now in this, if you find out W, so we have to integrate it. V1 to V2 and 0 to W. Right? Okay. 
correct? So W is equals to, we get minus P external DV, V1 to V2. This is the in general expression we have, which we use to find out the expression of work and various process. Yes, understood. The unit of work done is we can have, yeah, unit of work done we can have joule, we can have calorie, we can have ATM liter. Okay, anything we can have. Whenever you do P into V, so pressure is in ATM, volume is in liter. So mostly you will get the you know, work done in ATM liter. So always keep that in mind. So whenever work done is in ATM liter, you have to convert it in Joule. So one ATM liter, one ATM liter is equals to 101.325 Joule. With this, you can easily convert. Okay, or if you don't remember this, you must know that 0 0.0821 R value, 0 0.0821 ATM liter per mole Kelvin, right? ATM liter per mole Kelvin. Uh, no, no, depends on the option, but I would suggest take this value only. Okay, don't approximate it to zero. And we also know R value 8.314 Joule per mole Kelvin. Right, so if you see these two value here, can we write this 0 0.0821 ATM liter is equals to 8.314 Joule? Right. So from this, you can always find out one ATM liter equals to 8.314 divided by 0 0.0821 Joule. So with this expression also, you can find out the relation. Got it? Right. So any one, you know, relation we can keep in mind. So this is the work done thing, right? Now we have few conditions into this and in different different processes how to find out work done. Okay, we'll continue with this in the next class. Correct. So after next class, you can start solving numericals on this. Fine. Okay. Okay, guys, thank you. Take care. Yeah, bye.